Welcome to the Multifamily Zone, where business meets family. We explore what the entrepreneur life looks like from the family perspective. Now here are your hosts, Julia and Gino Barbaro. Hey everyone, this is Julia Barbaro, host of the Multifamily Zone podcast. I am here with the co-founder of Jake and Gino, my husband and the co-host, Gino Barbaro. Hey, Gino. Hey, Julia. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. We have a great show today. Um, I wanted to, um, the, 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 we're going to be talking about building a team, building a team um, in the family as far as um, working together. Um, you can maybe talk about building a team at work um, and we can kind of, you know, bring it together there. Um, but it's important because a lot of people ask us, you know, how do we work together? Um, and this is part of it. You know, if, if we have a team working smoothly at home, um, it's really going to be helpful because we're already working together at home. There's a lot to talk about here because I was fortunate when I bought the restaurant 25 years ago, uh, I inherited my wife. She was working at the restaurant. <laughs> so that was like the best thing that I got from the restaurant, believe it or not, by far. So um, we started working together. Uh, that's where we started. We met, we dated, and she was a rock star. Um, she was a great worker. I mean, what a W2 worker. You want to have her working for you because she would uh, run the dining room. She'd dance the phone. She was really a hustler, a really great worker. And then when we got married, she took over the responsibilities of the home, and she, she's she been working ever since. So um, as far as team leader, um, you know, when you, when you think about a team, I think the most important thing you have to decipher is what kind of culture do you want to have in your team? And our culture for our family was really important. The culture for our family is we wanted to be parents and we wanted to walk the walk and talk the talk, whatever, however that goes, and really be leaders of our, of our family. And um, I think one of the most important things when you're raising your children is really to look at the differences between children. I mean, we're both different. We both have different personalities and each child or each team leader person on your team is going to be different, just like your children. So you have to figure out as a leader, how to um, run them. I don't want to say, I don't no, want to make... how to give each person a role, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the, the beauty of working together is that I, we see each other's strengths and we can work off that, you know, and if, if I need help, I can say, Hey, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Um, give me a hand in this, but we could also do that with our kids and you know um, It's important to to see that and and know that and this is also at work You have someone with the strength, you know use that work with that and as they grow a little they might change and and it's it's so important as parents to be open to change and when change comes Embrace it and say okay. How are we gonna move forward now? Okay now things are different and that's okay. So when you start building a team, um, the first thing you need to do is assess what, what roles and responsibilities. This is one of the hardest things for an entrepreneur. I mean, for a family, it's a little bit different. You're building a team and you're having more kids, right? So, I mean, you can sort of, you know, we wanted to have as many children as possible. So we just had, had, had children and we grew the team that way. But as an entrepreneur, it's, it's a lot harder because you've got this business and it's, you're unsure when to add the next team member. Uh, you're trying to forecast and you're trying to really build it out. And one thing that I saw at the restaurant was that I didn't work on culture enough in the restaurant. I didn't work on uh, what, what those, you know, the delaying aspects we wanted in the company for it to be right now in Jake and Gino, part of our cultures, we, we, we have our, our core values. We like to call them. And maybe you should create some type of core values for your family. What are, what are your family core values? Some of our core values from our family is we love to spend time together. We want to be doing things together. We always go on vacations together. We always we used to go shopping together all the time. And it was a lot of fun. And that, that was one of our core values is really spend time together doing anything. Um, I think one of the core values from Jake and Gino that I can pull through is unwavering ethics. I want to I think we should all teach our, our children all about that and waving ethics. What does that mean when you see something that's wrong? Uh, step up to it and own it, right? People first is another thing. I want my children to see that people are really important in life. And and when we're doing Jake and Gino and we're having Moran property management and we're dealing with tenants and we're dealing with students, um, people first is a really important core value that we aspire to. So really stop and think for a second, what core values do you want 
to impress upon your children and what core values you want to have for your family. And maybe even take it a step further and create a mission statement. I don't have our mission statement written down here for Jake and Gino for, for our Rand family of companies, but I, I remember when we wrote it down a couple of weeks ago, we've been writing it down. It's really to improve the lives of others through our family of companies, whether that's teaching students how to become better investors, better educators, educating them better, or through our property management company where we can provide great housing for people. So that's what our mission statement is. So maybe you can draw up a mission statement for your family also. Yeah. And it sounds like too that you're, you're kind of saying as well is, is you're, you know, how are we letting each member of the team be part of, um, part of it? You know, how are, how are we actually uh, letting them know that their 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 being there is valued and their time is valued, um, whether that's um, you know even the the silliest of conversations of like what we're having for dinner, or just something like that that they have a say in this 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 family, um, uh, what movie we're going to watch. You know what I mean? And I know I'm sure at work as well. If you if you let people know that they're they're valued, I, I, you know, are they going to be working better for you? Uh, we beat this drum all the time on the show, especially. And, and the big word, more than anything else that I've learned over the last 18 months, to two years, and it really, it's impactful for an mm -hmm. entrepreneur is the word communication. Mm -hmm. We always, you're always going to hear that word at least once or twice every week on this podcast. And I really can't downplay that because you have to be able to communicate to every team member mm -hmm. and we have what we call l10 meetings level 10 meetings whether it's with our marketing department whether it's with our business operations manager whether it's our property management team our videographer our sales team those l10 meetings will really keep you on staff and we did a podcast with jim shields talking about his board board meetings uh what happened yesterday, an example of this was one of my daughters, I went shopping with them and uh, we get in the golf cart, drive across the street, go to Publix, we're shopping and it's a typical 10 year old, I want this, I want this, I want this and they're finally the 13 year old and I probably could have communicated better. We're like, you know, hold on a second, um, let's, don't have to buy everything, you know, and I just didn't do the right thing. And she's the sensitive one and she just took everything the wrong way. And when she came home, she was really upset. My wife worked through it. And the moral of the story was it was great because then what ended up happening was I ended up going out at nighttime and going shopping, just me and her. And it was awesome. And then afterwards we went to Taranak, which is a little Italian restaurant. We had a little margarita pizza. We had some carpaccio. We had a salad and it was all about the communication. Her telling her that, you know what? I still love you. I love you a lot. I mean, like I didn't communicate right yeah. what I meant. We don't need to buy all these things. Right. We have a lot of this stuff and yeah. that's the important part. It's important. And when I, of course, when I knew the whole story afterward, um, the communication is so important, but the way we communicate sometimes is actually more important, right? The way we actually phrase our words, the way we, um, our tone of voice, all of that actually makes a huge difference. So if we're saying one thing, you know, if, if we're saying to a kid, why did you do that? Or you can't get that, you know, that's, that's sending a negative message. But why not rephrase that and say, you know, I noticed that you wanted to get this. Do you think it's a better idea if we wait till next time? You know, I know that sound, it's a lot of effort. And when you're not used to it, it can be very, very tiring. Um, but I promise you, it does make a difference because all of that would have been completely avoided um, if, if... <laughs> So she's looking at this. Let me give a little context to this because she's laughing and everything. The context was I had just gone on Amazon and I just bought her balance beam for the whole thing yes. for her birthday. Her birthday's a month away. So I'd already spent a lot of money on it. So it's not really about the money. It's really about living within the means, yes. living within the bounds and not thinking that we're unlimited, even though it doesn't matter. I can afford but it. I'm just saying the That's way the that point. we communicate. So let me finish yeah. the communication story because the story is, is, is good because this is how it is. <laughs> I get in the golf cart where you go out there, we're buying all this stuff and it's just like, and, and she's 11 years old. She's going to be 11 years old. And she, she's really good. I mean, she asks for stuff. She's a blonde like my wife. She's beautiful. She's got these eyes that you just can't say no to. And then after a while, it gets on. He's like, again, this, this. So that's really the buildup. So for every parent out there that, you, that you, know, you try to aspire to greatness and try to do great things, it's hard sometimes because it's hard it to say so no. It is so hard. It so, is hard. And that's the, the thing. way you say no. Yeah, I agree it, with you. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you. No, I know I'm you're not. Saying, I know you're not. It's so hard to admit. Right. Oh, it it's so like, hard to admit that we, we could have done it differently and the outcome could have been easier. And, but it's funny. I'll even give you an example. She wanted Q-tips for $2.39. <laughs> 
I could buy a thousand of cubes. It's not the point. I'm like, Veronica, we have them at home. I buy them in bulk. I'm making her understand that. Then she wanted a little glass bottle. Oh, we have hundreds yes. of them. No, I got to give the story because I got to give the context because I was like, wow. And then like another thing. And then she wanted a fly swatter. And she, I'm like, Veronica, we're in public getting some groceries. We don't need all this stuff. She's an excited shopper. Exactly. So, but I'm just saying the communication yes, aspect is really right. important on yes, it. So, it and also to keep positive. And I, and I know that again, it's a struggle sometimes because sometimes we just want to say what we're thinking in the team, you know, you know, but the question is, how are we saying it? So that's important to really notice and pay attention um, this next week on how you're actually communicating um, to your family. How are you communicating? Is it a negative or can you shift your mindset to positive? You know, even, even focus on, in, on in, in the team at home, what is going right? Because half the time we always focus on the negative, right? And we can point out everything wrong that's, is, that's going on in the family. You can point out every negative thing about each person, you know? But what's going right? There's always more in that, on that list, always. So what is going right in the family? Um, maybe what needs working on? Okay, we need to work on this. How are we gonna do it? When are we gonna do it? Who's gonna be helping with it? These are all questions that we could, you know, the steps to make the team run smoother. I'm going to go back to my story again because <laughs> I think it's funny because at the end of the day, I'm thinking, wow, she got a dinner out of me too. So I could have bought the $2. He's a sucker. That's why. He's $2 just, team okay. tips and all that yeah. stuff. So she knows she, you. now that I'm thinking about it, but that's the way she communicated. And she, we're driving to the store and she looks at me and she goes, dad, how about a little dad Veronica time? I'm like, how can I say no to that? So the way she asked me was like, okay. And, and you know what? For me, honestly, I'm so happy that we went and I made the effort to go after the shopping because it was a great time for us to bond, to really talk about the situation. I wasn't really saying no to her. I was just saying no to, to the excesses that we didn't need the stuff. So she completely understood it and she got it after we spent that quality time together. It was just me and her. So it's important that you need to do that. Spend quality time with each one of your team members and let them be heard. And I think the most powerful question that you can ask, whether it's a team member or your child, especially when they get older, you know, what do you think about that? What, what's your opinion on it? I could, if she was older, I'd say, well, Ronica, what do you think about that? Do you think we really need to buy that? And then she'd probably go to me and say, you know what? You're probably right, Dad. She's a little bit too young for that. But as they get older, that's an important, well, empowering question. Well, you'd be surprised how young they are. But they do understand. And if you let them, if you allow them to understand, um, you know, allow them to have a voice, I guess, in their little, in their little person mind. It's pretty amazing what they, what they could come out with, you know. I know. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go off what Gina was saying, was that, um, you know, each person in the family, each team member in the family um, to be listened to, but also to be appreciated and to point out the things that they're doing and to say, you know, I noticed how you handled that situation. I loved that. How are you going to teach your younger sister how to do that because that was pretty amazing. Um, that actually can really boost up their self-esteem. Um, they could be, you know, just, they can have just a happier time together amongst each other. And I, and I, and I always, I always forget it. I'm going to be honest. I actually sometimes will go through the whole day with no compliments to any of the kids. And at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I just missed out on every, like every opportunity. That's great. She goes through the whole month without giving me a compliment. So going through a day without giving a compliment is not bad, people. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. A week. <laughs> Maybe a week, right? So she's laughing everybody. So when she laughs, a little uncomfortable laugh, she's like, wow, my husband's right. So I'm getting some compliments after this podcast. That's good. I'll write him out. <laughs> Listen, send a, send a text. Let's take a quick break. I just want to mention something that we're doing on October 19th and 20th at the Gaylord Palms in Orlando, Florida. We're going to be anticipating about 600 multifamily investors to be in attendance along with the entire Jake and Gino team. Now, Julie and I are going to be hosting a spouse's workshop at that event on Sunday, uh, on October 20th. Seating is going to be limited to just the first 30 attendees. Uh, now, Julia, what are we going to be talking about at that workshop? Um, so, Gina, we're going to be talking about our favorite topic, which is communication, right? I love talking about communication because obviously, when you can learn to communicate, life does get easier, you know, and I'm going to be honest. We're going to talk about mind, mindset, how to go from negative to positive um, and what will happen. Um, we'll, we'll be talking about giving up the need to be right. That's a hard one, everybody. I still, I'm still working on that. And I have a lot of fun stories. <laughs> well, let's hear some of the stories after this, after this message. So keep going. <laughs> um, them supporting each other, working together. Like I say, um, you are already working together because you're married, you have a family, you already are working together. 
So do you really want to work together? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Um, and then the big one, taking responsibility, being responsible for our decision making, for our actions, for our communicating. <laughs> so we'd like to have both spouses attend, but it isn't necessary to have both spouses attend. Click on the link down below in the show notes to sign up for the workshop. And we just look forward to seeing you there, being part of the Jake and Gino community. And now back to the show, because I want to hear one of those stories when I was oh, not they need right. To be right. Yeah, they need to be this right. This is actually important in, in building that team because a lot of us, you know, we are so stubborn and we don't want to be wrong. And we, we, we will, we'll just argue our point and actually get into a fight, whether it's with the kids or with their husband or whoever. Um, and in, in the reality, the conversation is not important. You know, in two hours, you'll forget. The next day, you'll know I remember it. You, you won't remember it at all. And I'm not talking about like major things. You know, you know, the kids are in the pool, it's thundering, and I'm like, kids, get out. My husband's like, no, I'll be fine. That's actually a dangerous situation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just a normal everyday situation that doesn't matter. And here's the story. I got one of my own, but let me okay, see it's the same one she's got. So we ordered some new furniture from, from Ethan Allen. Beautiful stuff. My husband loved these, these stools for our countertop. Um, now, the woman ordered the stools. Great. They came. And I know Ethan Allen will not take back furniture if it doesn't work. If it's malfunctioned, that's different. So when she called me to ask if everything was okay, I said, you know what, the stools are really high for countertop stools. I'm you know, surprised that that's, that's the height of them. I said, the legs don't even go under the countertop. And she's like, well, that doesn't seem right. Let me look. She looked through her notes and she realized that she ordered bar stools, which are you know, obviously taller. Now, the previous day, my husband um, was sitting on them. I'm like, these are too tall. And he's like, no, they're, they're perfect. They're perfect. <laughs> they're great. My legs fit under. They did not fit under. They're still okay And he for reminded me, me of a child <laughs> who was putting on an outfit, insisting that it fit. And it was from the previous year. And he just wanted it. He wanted it to work um, because he knew they wouldn't return them. Um, and that was the moment where I just watched him talk, watched him talk. And I forgot about, I didn't pay attention to the words he was using. I just looked at him and I looked at him as a person talking to me and, and, and I completely just, all that anxiety that I had as far as trying to prove that they were too tall, that kind of went away because I wasn't paying attention because it wasn't important. And I said, okay, I said, it's fine. And I didn't, it didn't let it bother me because, I, because it wasn't important and I, and I admitted that. Now it turns out the lady will return them. She, she's gonna exchange them. But it was an interesting, it was an interesting experience for me. So me, part of the experience was, not the end of the world. If I got to keep the bar stools, I don't really care. So part of it was, it is what it is. If we got to keep them, it's fine for me. If we got to get them returned, it's fine for me. So I have another story, which is even better than that one. When my daughter went to go put gas in my car, I told my daughter and my wife that the gas was enough to get, and they both are arguing with me. And you know what? At that point, I have an ego like everybody else. I know my car. I know that there's enough gas. I know there's a yellow light in there that has to do something else. So my wife gets in the car, a day after the incident and goes, Hmm, what's that yellow light? Is that low gas? I'm like, no, that's the sensor that I was telling you. But like my wife said, the bottom line is, does it really make a difference at the end of the day that I was right about it? I should have let it go. I let it go. If it was five years ago, I would have actually taken her out of the car and turned the car on and showed it to her, but I let her get in the car and do it. So I guess the moral of the story is that gets you nowhere in life. Yeah. That really, that really tears down relationships. And the fact that we have a great life and stuff like that doesn't really bother us. If you're teetering, if you're having a stressful life, if you're having a stressful job, if you're at the restaurant and it's 90 degrees like I was, things like that chip away and chip away mm -hmm. and the need to be right is really important. So catch yourself. And well, that's why yeah. coaching is yeah. really important. Um, it, it can really chip away and damage you. To us, it's mm -hmm. like, it's not a big deal to us. Well, the so. goal is to get both parties on board. So if you have a husband and wife working together, both trying to avoid the need to be right, life actually will be great. And that's, what, <laughs> you that, know? that's, and one that's of, the goal. Yeah, that's one of the things with team building, though, I think, I think and, and being in business, everyone has to check their ego at the door. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're, you have ego and blind spots, as um, Ray Dalio said in his book, right? Uh, it's really amazing that ego can really crush 
a business. And if you, if you're building a team that has a lot of egos on it, they're not going to be able to willing to work. They're not going to be willing to share there that, that need to be right will damage yeah. everything. So, you know, I just thought it was funny because I felt bad because my daughter had to put gas in the car really early. So that was where I was coming from. Like she didn't have to do that. I didn't want her to do that. I didn't want her to take my car. But at the same time, I just like, I, want, I didn't want to lose to this one. So you know how it goes, right? We, we, we all do. I mean, we all, we're all guilty of it. Um, but just the, 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 the thing is, try to be aware. Try to be aware of when you're in that moment getting irritated, trying to prove yourself when it really doesn't matter. Step back and say, why am I arguing on this? I'm just going to back off and how great that would be. Good. So what else we got? Um, so then, you know, as far as the team goes, um, it's important, you know, I don't know what you do at work, but if you have meetings, I guess you, you do because you talked about that a little bit. Um, at home, like even during dinner, you know, have a conversation. You know, what do you guys want to see in, in, the, in the house? What do you guys want to do differently? What, what do you guys, you know, give, ask the questions. Most of the time we actually forget to actually just ask the questions to the kids or to our husband. You know, what do you want to see different? What do you like? What do you like that we're doing? You know, and, and actually listen to the answers because a lot of us actually try to control that conversation of what we're going to be doing instead of finding out what everyone else thinks. And I think some of the team members can be stronger than others and they can drown out the volume of the others. Mm -hmm. So your children are just the same way where they want their points across and why isn't it and life isn't fair and why does she get it? Why she doesn't get it? Just really be yeah. open-minded and be objective. It's the same thing with building a team. Right. Um, in the business so well that's uh, kind of like too like it's you know it's I don't know I guess you would have it too at work but like kind of like a jealousy thing where one person knows how to do something really really well and there's a lot of tension going on in the house because of it because the other person is really not good at it so that's you, an issue that we have important. to so I don't know how you handle it so very important with business when you're building teams you want to build teams with people with strength so let's say there's a person who's a really great salesperson is he really going to be, or is she going to be part of the operations? No, she's not. He or she is not. Their strength is not reading contracts and doing due diligence. Their strength is maybe getting on the call, phone call, and doing sales. So I guess building a team in the business world is really putting the right butt in the right yeah. seat. And if you don't do that, you're gonna you're gonna damage that relationship and try to find their strength. Yeah. Um. For us. Um, one of the reasons why we, we always talk about food is it was really important for us to talk about food because we love food and food is central to us. We, my wife cooks three meals a day and really involves the children. That's why we would always go shopping with the kids. That's why I still go shopping all the time with the kids. So it's important to involve them in a lot. Like my wife says, mm -hmm. when you're building a team. But even the cooking, I want to go back to the jealousy thing real quick um, because one of our daughters makes incredible omelets and the other kid is slightly jealous. Um, and the way that we handled it once that actually worked out really well um, and again, you have to remember that I am just trying to figure this out, just like everyone else. You know, we try things, sometimes they don't work. Try something else, it works on one kid. Um, but in this particular time, I actually took that other child who was a little bit jealous, and I said, you know, you know that it was Veronica. Veronica has a real gift on cooking. I don't know what it is, but she really is good at it. Do you want to see if she'll be able to teach you? Because she's really great at it. And, you know, and kind of show that that other person is gifted and it's special and they also have gifts but if we're focusing on all everyone else's gifts we're actually not paying attention to what we have because we're just you know focused on everyone else um and so that actually helped because then veronica was was able to say i would love to show you and then they got kind of together and they had like a special bond between the two of them and it actually did work so I like that story yeah. and I like the omelets too. So yeah, it's a win-win for me, right? <laughs> I mean, I'll get an omelet from an 11 year old and an eight year old. So it's really awesome. So what are action steps? So action steps are just, again, awareness, awareness of um, what kind of team you're trying to run, what, what, you know, at home, what's working, what's not working. Let's, let's talk about it amongst, you know, the team members, which are definitely you and your, and your spouse, um, but also with the kids. What you need, what you need change in, what, what areas you need change in, um, how you're going to be changing it, when you're going to be changing it, um, and then what steps everyone can do. Everyone can do little steps, you know, whether it's the little kids or the older kids or whoever, um, but just take steps into that, onto that right path. So um, I think other uh, action steps that we can take are 
think about where you want your family to go or where you, how you want your family to grow. I mean, now I'm not talking about the size of the family, but what you want to implement in yours, what kind of you know team building you want to do, what kind of activities you want to do with your children, how you want to communicate with them, mm -hmm. uh, create that mission statement. I mean, if you don't plan it, my wife always says, if you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. So be intentional about how you want to create. The, and keep the, the it fun. Keep it fun because that's what, you know, I actually don't like when it's work. I don't really want to do it. So keep it fun, keep it lively, um, you know, bring in the laughs and the jokes and all that, because that's what, that's what makes it all that much better. Excuse me. So you've got a lot of action steps this week. Think about what you want your, I guess, quote unquote, core values to be in your family. Um, that's really important and what you want to aspire to. So when you're not living up to the core values as a leader, you're like, wow, I got to take a step back and I'm not yeah. doing the right thing. Well, and it's easier to make decisions, right? When you have that, because then you could just say, you know what, this goes against what we believe. Not going to do it. And it's simple. It's yeah. funny because if you have them in business, you hire and you fire based on your core values. Mm -hmm. One of our core values, another one is blue collar work ethic. I mean, I don't want to hear anybody say it's not my job. It's just not happening with us because we're a small entrepreneurial startup. We all have to bootstrap it. I'm doing $5 an hour work, $8 an hour work. Everyone in the company does that. So um, we hire on that, on that ethic. We hire on that core value and we fire on that core value. And so you're not going to hire somebody into an organization if that's not what they want. If they want a steady paycheck, they come in, they punch in, they punch out. They go, they don't want to have anything else to do other than the three responsible things. That, that, it's not going to work in our, and, and you're going to see that. And it's funny, Jake would always say he would always poo poo core values and, and, and ethics and not ethics, core values and, and, and that, that whole culture. But it's really important in business once mm -hmm. you start growing, because you want everyone to have the same kind of culture and you, you can see it from companies, right? Look at all the amazing companies out there, their culture. I'll give you one instance, Zappos. Zappos uh, was, I don't remember who the founder was. He wrote a great book. Um, the culture of his company was really amazing and they were high, able to hire and to really build a team out and really scale up and systematize. So really think about that for your family. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Well, so thank you. we just want to say thanks to everyone for listening to us. And if you have any questions or you want us to answer any questions on the show, just email us at uh, Gino at Jake and Gino.com. We'd love to do it. And until next time, yes. have a great week with the family, everybody. Thanks everyone.